Are you ready to create motion graphics that literally come to life? Well, with the power of After Effects, this is how to build hyper-realistic graphics and blend them perfectly into any video. <laughs> Let's get started. All right, the first step to consider is creating 3D motion graphics because a 2D graphic will just blow away in the wind. So if you want to make a 3D logo, icon, or really anything for that matter, 3D, this is how. I would start by throwing a square with all your strength by using the rounded rectangle tool. For some simple 3D, plop a cube into the 3D box and most importantly, set After Effects to Advanced 3D. Though this is easy 3D, trust me. <laughs> Under Geometry Options, increase the extrusion depth from anywhere on the low end of 100 to the high end of 500 for a big bulky box. You can also use the Orbit tool here at the top to turn this bad boy to see what you're actually doing. Try setting the style to convex and increasing the bevel depth by a touch. If you have any graphics like a logo or a composition consisting of titles and other graphics, make that layer 3D as well and then set your 3D box's Z position to exactly one. Very cool. Feel free to apply this technique to anything that you may have. Keep in mind, you can also adjust the roundness of your box as well. And that's gonna be a quick way to make any 2D graphic appear 3D. And when you're done peeping with the camera, be sure to click reset default camera. Now, if you wanna make a logo or an object actually 3D, hopefully you have an Illustrator document because you can right click this type of asset and select create shapes from vector layer. And this creates a shape layer. And in some cases, you may need to change the color of the group and rebuild the original logo. And when you have multiple segments, AKA groups for a graphic like this one, you can turn off one of the groups and apply the same 3D extrusion settings from before. Then use the Z position to pull this away from your 3D square. Then duplicate the shape layer, unhide the other group and hide the previous one and adjust the Z position again to build out a very 3D logo or you know whatever you may have. Sometimes your logo might not be a Tinderella and there will only be one group. But now that you are unhinged, you can build out the rest of your scene no problem. Keep in mind, you do not have to make your 2D graphics actually have a 3D box. Just make your 2D graphics 3D layers and leave them alone. You can also rotate any of your graphics to show off their paper thin depth as well, which will look great on your footage. And before we integrate our graphics into our video, ensure you always create great work with our free After Effects and Premiere Pro templates, trendy transitions, and powerful motion graphics that you can customize in no time. This is all here in our Motion Duck extension where you can add thousands of templates and presets directly into your project and suit them to fit your vision in seconds. So get to producing your masterpiece with these countless assets linked below if you do pick up anything. And if you do pick up anything, you will be supporting this channel. So thank you very much. All right, let's show how to composite our graphics into our scene. Pre-compose all your graphics and then throw in your video of any kind, or you can practice with the AI generated video that I'm using here that took me three hours to prompt correctly. Dang it. So with your 3D graphics, again, make the layer 3D and this time click continuously rasterize to make all that 3D data, you know, come over to your main composition. Now, add the 3D camera tracker effect to your video clip. And after it's done analyzing, I like to usually increase the track and target sizes so we can see what we're doing. And typically what you wanna look for is a plane with a flat laying circle on the surface, roughly where you want to insert your graphics into your footage. When you find something that may not be perfect, right click and choose create shadow capture your camera and light. And don't worry, your graphics didn't grow legs and walk away. Just copy the position of the shadow catcher and paste it to the position of your comped up graphics and then scale your graphics for the time being. Now, in order to see actual shadows, set your light to an environment light and you'll start to see those shadows. You'll likely need to adjust the Y position of your shadow catcher, AKA floor, to place the shadows underneath your graphics. And you can clean this all up by setting the X orientation to 270 and the Y orientation to zero degrees to ensure that your floor is not going to be crooked. And when you're done, be sure to scale up your shadow layer like crazy until they are seamlessly integrated. And then feel free to reposition your graphics and shadow as you need for your scene. Okay, this looks great and is about to look a whole lot better with the power of lighting. Now there's a couple of options. You can set the source of your light to your footage to use your clip as a lighting map, which is probably the best way to go. However, using the default source light is a valuable option because you can adjust the light's rotation and you know it's just good to mess around with what works best, right? But you can also mess with the intensity as well. And then lastly, make sure you go to render options and you select fit the scene and adjust your shadow quality to activate your computer's fan. All right, two more things, reflections and material options. Mess with the specular shininess, metal, and diffuse on one of your source graphics, and then you can just paste the material options to all your other graphics in no time. And this will usually change your look completely. You can also create an adjustment layer and throw down the curves effect. 
set the track map to your graphics layer, turn it back on, and then use the curves to blend this better into your scene if needed. Awesome. Now, to create masterful reflections, duplicate everything except for your shadow layer, then pre-compose all those duplicates, which we'll call reflection. Inside of that composition, turn off the video layer and then use the compound blur effect on a new adjustment layer. You want to set the blur layer to your video and then mess around with the blur amount and invert the blur option until your main scene is great. However, you'll need to rotate the reflection by 180 degrees and flip the composition horizontally. And lastly, feel free to lower the opacity of your master reflection. And now you are the master. Subscribe to be the best and always be creating.